These bags aren't getting any lighter, man. What's up? I've never seen so much, so much plastic in my whole life. The world is literally drowning in plastic. Meanwhile, Germany's reputation on recycling, absolutely impeccable. My country is dubbed the world champion when it comes to recycling. But do we actually deserve this title or do we just export our problem like everyone else does? Follow me as I take a really close look to see if Germany is a genuine champion when it comes to plastic. This is my plastic waste from just one week. We've got wrapping paper, we have loads of shampoo, um, yogurt pots, takeout dinner, some wasabi nuts and bottles. It's just, it's just so much stuff. Turns out Germany isn't just a champion recycler of plastic waste, but also excels at churning it out. Germans produced 38 kilograms of plastic packaging waste per person in 2016. The EU average was 24 kilograms. It is also way higher than the 11 or 17 kilograms that people consume in India or Indonesia. And this is all their plastic, not just packaging. But what happens to this or maybe to this or maybe let's say this once I throw them out? Spoiler alert, not all of them get recycled. Look at all these tiny labels we got here. This one says PET, HDPE, PP. They stand for the different types of plastic and relate to how easily they can be recycled. PET, another PT, PS, HDPE. This one as well. This really is like a proper, <laughs> proper, proper mess. And I personally don't think that this is sortable, but let's give the German recycling system a chance to uh, prove itself. This is the first station of the German recycling system. Here, the trash gets sorted for a very first time. In Germany, we normally separate residual waste, glass and paper waste. And usually, my plastic waste would go in here. But this one is coming with me. I got the chance to work with the people who collect my plastic trash and they start pretty early. It's 5.30 in the morning, we're all in very, very high spirits and today we're going to take one of these and find out if Germany deserves that title as world champion of recycling after all. To do that I need to change clothes, bright orange it is and go through safety instructions, which are already a little bit scary. You have shoes on, they are not very tight and fast. That means, be careful when you go somewhere, please look before you go. It can be that there is a broken glass in there, etc. It can even be that there is a spray in there. Yeah. Today I join Martin Gersh and help him load the truck with plastic. I need you today. You need me today? Yeah, I don't want to leave you alone. Martin has been on the job for over two years. Each day he covers up to 20 kilometers on foot. How much plastic is coming out now? It depends on how many steering wheels we have, right? Yeah, but how much plastic is coming out? Over 8 tons. 8 tons? 8 tons. We need to hurry because there is no time to waste. my first ever recycling bin. Everything goes pretty smoothly. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, still learning the ropes. The sheer masses of plastic waste and packaging is mind-blowing. I'm really starting to get an idea of what 38 kilograms of plastic waste per person actually means. But the problem isn't just the insane amount. 
we got the first like misplaced item, so uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it here basically and sell them. That's not what belongs in the plastic bin. Yeah, it's like metal, and that's definitely not plastic. Moin! <lacht> Martin, passiert das oft? Also, dass die Leute halt so was Falsches in die Tonne reinschmeißen? Ja, viel zu oft. Also kommt dann halt oft einfach alles in ein so ein Ding rein. Das, was sie in den Händen haben, das schmeißen die auch rein. Ja, Hast du mal einen Tag, wo du irgendwie keinen Sack sperren musst oder irgendwie sowas? Nee. Nee. Also immer. Es den, gibt's immer nicht. den gibt es nicht. Immer. Es gibt auch keinen, ey, keinen Tag, wo du keine Tonne sperren tust. Du hast immer was dabei. Ja. Also die Leute kriegen es halt einfach nicht so wirklich hin. Es ist halt so. Traurig, aber wahr. The Industry Association estimates that misthrows are present in 40 to 60 percent of bins and bags. Alter, was soll, was soll der Scheiß denn? Guck mal, das hier überall. Hat liegen lassen. Liegen lassen? Nur die Säcke. Ah. Okay, fair. Das, 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 das ist ein Zelt. Das ist ein Regal, Teppich, Wäscheständer. <lacht> Alter. Ja, Zeit für, Zeit für einen roten Zettel. It says wrongly sorted. It's household trash and doesn't belong anywhere near a recycling bin for plastics. And that's why we won't empty it. Leichter werden die Dinger auch nicht, ne? <laughs> Only two hours into the shift and I'm already dead on my feet. Martin tells me that he used to do these rounds alone. Unbelievable. But the amount of plastic just became unbearable for one person. Yeah. After eight hours of collecting plastic waste, we are back at where we started. I really, really don't know how much stuff is going to be in there. Time to unload this beast. And this is just one truck. There are thousands of these driving around and unloading in Germany, let alone in the world. Was haben wir geschafft? Wir haben heute fast 5,3 Tonnen. 5,3 Tonnen? Ist das viel, wenig? Ja, das ist viel. Ja, so fühle ich mich auch, als hätten wir es viel geschafft. <lacht> I never thought that eight hours of work could take such a huge toll on me. So this is everything we collected today. That's like five and a half tons of everything. There's plastic, there's metal. It's all over the place. And tomorrow I'm going to sort this stuff out. And I don't know if that's possible. All right, it's time for my second day. Ugh. At one of Germany's biggest sorting plants, spokesperson Andreas Jenswold is showing us around. The place is gigantic. Around 7,000 square meters dedicated to sorting plastic. 400 tons go through here every single day. That's 72 times as much as Martin and I collected yesterday. So, jetzt wird's etwas muffelig. Oh yes, it smells somewhat sweet, but in a disgusting way. <laughs> so much plastic. Wir haben zurzeit deutlich mehr Material in der Anlage. Das ist Corona bedingt. Äh, haben wir eine Verbraucherverhaltensänderung festgestellt, dass etwa 20 Prozent oder bis zu 20 Prozent mehr Material hier sortiert werden muss. Und er aber schafft, schafft er noch oder ist so langsam wird, wird die Luft eng? Es wird eng, weil tatsächlich seit Jahresbeginn die Kollegen hier äh, inklusive Samstags durcharbeiten. Also da werden tatsächlich extra Schichten eingelegt und sogar Feiertage wurden durchgearbeitet, damit man diesen schieren Mengen tatsächlich noch Herr werden kann. With this amount of plastic, most of the process is actually automated. The material gets sorted by size, huge magnets get rid of the metal, and infrared scanners sort the plastic by weight. Now is the perfect time to unpack my own household plastic trash. Was? 
passiert denn jetzt mit diesem Gerät, wenn wir ihm das hier oder das hier geben? Ja. Zwei sehr schöne Beispiele. Das eine ist vom Material her PET eigentlich wunderbar zu recyceln. Äh, die schwarze Einfärbung macht das dem Gerät allerdings schwer. Jeder hat gelernt in der Schule, schwarz reflektiert kein Licht. Und so ist es eben hier auch, zumal es auch noch auf dem schwarzen Vorderband liegt. Und dann haben die Geräte halt einfach eine Schwierigkeit zu erkennen, um welches Material es sich handelt. Die zweite Thematik ist hier dieser Becher. Da ist der Fehler, dass die Materialien nicht physisch voneinander getrennt wurden. So just separate the two and they are way easier to recycle. Another big problem is multi-layer plastics, like my cheese packaging over here. They consist of up to 15 layers that can't be separated anymore. The only thing that can be done, shred them and burn them. But this releases a lot of toxins into the environment. So actually 60% of consumer plastic waste is burned. What does that mean for the recycling rate? The official number is 38%. But that includes everything that makes it to the recycling depot. Even the waste that we export to other countries. Das sind ja international gehandelte Wertstoffe. Also das, was wir hier in Ballenware verpresst haben, wird dann an äh, Händler abgegeben und die schauen, wo sie es äh, idealerweise vermarkten können. Entweder an die dezidierten äh, Recyclingbetriebe innerhalb Deutschlands oder im europäischen Nachbarland. Wenn das nicht möglich ist, weil es dafür hier vor Ort keinen Absatz gibt, dann geht es meinethalben auch ins Ausland. Da sind wir aber jetzt die falschen Ansprechpartner, weil wir diese Praxis nicht betreiben. Germany is still shipping out more than a million tons of plastic waste each year. That makes us number three in the world. Greenpeace says many of the countries that we export to are located in Southeast Asia. Of course, not all of these exports are going to landfill dump sites. We've become um, the world's landfill. What's sad is a lot of um, Filipino communities are uh, have to deal with it uh, firsthand. And yeah, they feel frustrated that this is happening. And of course, they're feeling the impacts of a lot of these waste uh, getting into our ecosystems. But yeah, there's also this feeling that of helplessness in a way, because until there are proper regulations that prevent, prevent um, waste importation, um, there's really no way around it. To keep this from happening, some companies are creating new products from recycled plastic. Here at plastics producer Pöppelmann in the north of Germany, they decided on flower pots. A pretty rare phenomenon in Germany. Only some 16% of our consumer plastic waste is turned into new products here. We are durchaus Weltmeister, wenn man sich so Stoffstrombilder anguckt, dabei das Material zu sammeln ähm, und es vielleicht auch ein Stück weit aufzubereiten, aber daraus dann wieder ein neues Produkt zu machen. Da sind eben genau die Quoten, die sind einfach viel zu niedrig für das, was heute schon möglich ist. One of the reason for the low rates, it's expensive. Recycled plastic costs up to 230 euros more per ton than virgin plastic. The coronavirus crisis greatly increased this cost difference as oil prices tanked, also bringing down the cost of new plastic. On top of that, it's a whole lot trickier to work with recycled plastics. Here sieht man ein klassisches Beispiel für ein Fremdpartikel, der ein, wenn er ein bisschen größer ist, ein Loch in den Topf reißen kann. So even with all the sorting and washing, which demands a lot of energy, you can't make plastic 100% pure again. And the market for these products remains small. Pöppelmanns put over three years into this project and they are still not turning a profit. To me, Germany doesn't deserve the title World Recycling Champion. Because with 16% of my plastic trash actually being recycled, we're still missing a massive 84%. It's a no-brainer that packaging companies need to come up with stuff that's easier to recycle. It's hard, I get that, but it's doable, as we saw today. And we consumers, we should really think twice if we need that peeled orange in a plastic cup. But if we do buy something that's wrapped in plastic, don't just use it once and just chuck it.